So I am finally getting around to finishing the ceiling and I thought, you know, I've done two rooms and this is the third room, so why not show somebody how this is done? Um, I got these tiles from Pro Ceiling Tile. Mm, I'll make sure I got that right. And it's basically you glue them to the ceiling. Um, we had some really really odd texture um, and then you could see patches in the ceiling where it had been things had been cut and replaced so we thought what would be a really clever solution for this so ceiling tiles it is um, yeah I'm also trying out this camera got the GoPro wanted one forever and I was like I guess I can just buy one now so I did that let's see if I can work the time warp feature And that's the quick tour of the downstairs. Uh, it's a 1912 farmhouse. It is uh, one of the original ones that I've been told in Portland, Oregon. And yeah, it's been my project for the past two years, doing every surface of this beast. Um, wanted to go with this kind of like interesting, Okay, so actually the reason I'm, I'm halting a bit is because we've tried to come up with a sort of a portmanteau of the style, but it's really eclectic. It's it's gothic eclectic or, um, ah, I don't know. You can make some comment and be like, this looks crazy. But um, I didn't want to go too modern with it because it is over a century old and I think it would do some disservice to the house itself. So, uh, tin tiles. And actually, I should show you, uh, these ones are actually vinyl. Um, if you look at my disgusting floor here, uh, these are the, the vinyl pieces that I'm using. Um, and that's because if you were to use the actual tin metal ones, you have to build a subframe. Uh, otherwise it will be too heavy and it will yank down your ceiling. It'll just, it, it's just the weight of it will tear down the drywall. Uh, because this is lath and plaster and then someone at some point drywalled over it and then yeah, these ones are light enough with the vinyl that you can just glue them up with super industrial adhesive. And then behind our little cooking area, these are the actual tin tiles for safety reasons, of course. You don't want anything that um, is going to be hot to be made of plastic. And yeah, uh, the tools of the trade you need. Ah, sorry, let me get my little piece here. Um, I've done the field tiles and that part is fairly easy. The hardest part is you have to do uh, vertical, hold on, backtrack that. You have to do perpendicular lines to make sure everything is lined up here. In order to do a tile ceiling, you really just need a few, uh, few things. I have found that measuring everything just actually on the ceiling and then finding the fit there is the best way to do it. Um, I'll show a quick example. So if I'm taking this piece of tile, and by the way, rooms are not square. I have learned this. You cannot measure from one side to the other and then just cut all those pieces accordingly because it's never gonna fit. It's the worst. Um, so you kind of have to think about everything upside down and backwards. So the way that this tile would fit here, it would be like this, however, this is not the part that would be glued to the ceiling. This is the part uh, because you want to have the nice clean edge here and then the cut edge against the, against the wall. So what you do, what I do rather, is flip it over. So this part is the part that I would be gluing. Um, the straight edge is actually going to be turned over and I'm sure there's a good terminology for this, but I have to flip it 180 degrees. So imagine this side is short and this side is long. You wouldn't want to cut it this way because then everything's flipped and you'll end up too short on one of these sides. So just know this would be the easiest way to do it. And then I make little markings here and here and then cut it. And I'm super good at this so I forgot my pen. Um, after making the markings, you are going to cut it. And I have found that the super heavy tin snips are the best uh, source because I've tried using scissors or 
like a straight blade, a box cutter, but these cut so smoothly that it's definitely what you want to use. Um, and then you just glue it up and you, you want to use power grab. And there's actually several different versions of this Loctite. It has to be the heavy duty power grab, zero second. And um, I forget, there's some, something here that just tells you how, basically it's the viscosity of this. Some of the Loctite, like the cheaper uh, versions of industrial adhesive, are thin, they're not very viscous. And so this one, um, I thought some of them had the viscosity on it, but I just know that this is the zero second, so as soon as you place it on the ceiling, it holds. You don't have to stand there like a jerk, just holding it up for, for 10 minutes. And also, I just want to make sure that it works. Um, <laughs> yep, drywall is what we're putting it on. And this is this vinyl, it doesn't specifically say that, but it's been holding for two years in the living room, so yeah. Okay, so when you do the, the adhesive, you have to remember that the part that is embossed is going to sit proud. So it's gonna be a little taller on the back. So that's where you wanna do the adhesive. It doesn't do you any good to put adhesive in these little divots because it's not gonna to stick to the ceiling at all. So that's why I'm doing it like this. So done with that run there, um, I wanted to stop the video to just go over a few things, just a few thoughts that I have. Okay, so I know it seems like kind of a crazy method to just kind of hold it up and measure it, but it's worked better than when I measured the actual distance and had to tape measure and did everything. Um, just because the walls, they, it's, they just aren't perfectly square rooms. So it works and I'll, I'll show you, it's kind of neat. Uh, here you can just see that it's right flush with the uh, with the wall there, and with this, I actually I don't even end up caulking it. I thought that I would, but you can see that it's lined up pretty darn crisp. You can see those little overlap areas. Look at those corners, pro. Um, done a few. <laughs> I think I counted at one point. In order to do one of these rooms, because they have all the trim pieces, uh, these ended up taking. Oh, it was something silly, like 176 p different pieces of plastic tile, because each one of those um, arrows and dart little pieces is a whole separate thing. Um, yeah, so we got that. The other thing I just wanted to mention, because I'm a freaking genius, and I mean that very facetiously, is I had ordered the exact amount of tile that I needed to, plus 10% but because I am not perfect at cutting things, see exhibit one right here, um, I ended up four tiles short. And it's actually, it's not just because of my, my ill-timed cuts, but I decided to do this, this uh, portion that kind of drops down. And I did this first because I thought that it would be nice to kind of get my feet wet and figure out the layout. But that means that I ended up using four extra tiles. Um, you've got this little quad, four, and then two here, one here, and then because this is slightly too wide, 
this is actually another full tile. So it was four separate tiles that had to be cut for this. And so I ended up four tiles short here. So what I got to figure out is because I only have uh, two left from the original printing, how I want to, to do this so it's not obvious um, that these tiles don't match. Uh, I ordered them about, I think, six months apart. And if you know anything about construction materials, the colors are stinking never the same. So this is the original set. You can see it's a lot crisper of a copper color. And then this is paint that's meant to look like a patina because these won't naturally patina because they are vinyl. Um, and you can see that with this second set, it, they just weren't as clean in, in bringing off the, the paint. So I think that was a stylistic choice. Unfortunately, you can see it's a bit of a difference. Um, so I'm trying to figure out if I want to do just the ends of the, just this long wall here or do the corners so they're dark. I gotta do something so it's a little bit hidden and only people who are really looking at it will, will figure it out. Um, just kind of, oh, also mentioning, did the copper countertops. This was a horrible project, but it uh, turned out beautifully. Uh, I really, really like the copper. It's a living metal, meaning that it's antimicrobial and then it changes in appearance. Uh, sometimes I do end up polishing it, but otherwise I just let it get this uh, darkened color. And then the black marble with the brass pieces, also quite the project. Uh, you can see some of them actually have started to tarnish a little bit, but I don't mind it. Um, you can pick apart my, my skills with the, the caulking. It's not my best, but it does seal it all. Did the plumbing and everything. And then, you know, because who wants a boring white uh, kitchen? We have a signed Clive Barker, yes please, and an original Blade Runner poster in the glow, gl the, uh, what, do you heck, what the heck do you call this? The glowing movie frame? Pretty sweet. And then all this like, uh, postmodern uh, stuff that I've slowly been restoring um, for the little coffee bar. I don't drink coffee. I just think it's really pretty. And the gent, the gent drinks coffee. So, you know. Um, yeah, so anyway, a little bit of a tangent there. But I really want to go over how to do this. And if anybody has any comments or thoughts on it, feel free to, to write those down. Um, yeah, this was Pro Ceiling Tiles. I liked them enough that I ended up purchasing this whole different uh, type of tile and they look amazing. It's one of those things that if anyone comes to the house are just kind of blown away by because this was just a boring popcorn ceiling and now it looks like this. And yes, what is finished? If you say the ceiling, you would be correct. Uh, the ceiling is now done. I finished that this morning. I had to do those trim pieces you saw, and this little bit that I'm going to combine with this, hopefully. And then I figured out what I was going to do with the pieces that were from the second set of tiles that I ordered. Um, yeah, definitely you should always order way more tiles than you need, so then you won't have to worry about these color variations. But what I decided to do is put just the... Um, the those uh, that second run of tiles along this edge here. So if you get really close, you can see that they're slightly darker, but it falls in a place where the, uh, I guess like a shadow naturally kind of forms. And then also, if I turn on this light here, again, with this uh, little bulkhead here, the shadow just naturally hits right where they are. So you don't even notice that they're a slightly different color. Uh, and then the way that, Oh, uh, okay, so I showed you how to do the, the cutting on the earlier. This piece is terrible. Um, I basically took a piece of paper, multiple pieces of paper, and then just folded them and fit them into this tiny little corner and then traced it out on one of these uh, two by two panels and then cut it out that way and did lots of itty bitty bits of trimming to get that going. Um, and I forgot to mention, but the whole reason I ended up doing this is because uh, back, I guess backtrack about two years ago when I got this house, the, I was walking through the kitchen and I just saw water pouring out of the ceiling. Uh, didn't used to have this lovely light fixture here. It was just one of those fluorescent boxes. 
And I thought to myself, I'm pretty sure that water should never be pouring from the light. So that's when I cut a bunch of holes in the ceiling and that's the only thing that we ever paid for was having someone uh, fix that plumbing that was in the bathroom. So it's actually a cracked pipe from the shower um, running along the joists and then dripping down the wires. So <laughs> that was all professionally fixed. And then yeah, did all this stuff. Uh, so the point of that being the, there was no way to make this ceiling smooth. So one, you had this horrific texture and then two, you had patches where someone had previously cut, uh, cut out some of the drywall and patched it. And then you had several more holes that I had cut out. So yeah, this is a much better option. Um, and I guess my goal of this is I want people to not be just like sticking with the standard white kitchen that has just rained its horrible reign of terror the past decade. Um, yeah, so I hope that somebody sees this and says, ah, yes, I should do something different with the ceiling and think of it as the, the fifth wall that you, can, that you can decorate that really adds something else to your space. So yeah, kind of a different video, but I just wanted to show you kind of what occupies my time after work and Oh my goodness, there's Sneaky Osiris being adorable. Come here, come here, Osiris. Oh, floors are next. You can see where all this has been torn up. Um, yeah, okay, so you can do all the regular things that people ask on YouTube, so doing the liking, the subscribing, um, and yeah, I think, yeah, we'll see what I post next. Whatever's interesting me at the time. All right, I will yak about something later, later.